So um, <clears throat> I have two presentations, and first I will introduce you like what I'm hacking. So and first I will tell you what is cyber-physical hacking, and um, the easiest is to explain on the very famous example of the Stuxnet. Safety is barely more than a fantasy. And even if systems are disconnected and claim to be highly secure, such as nuclear enrichment facilities or military sectors, there is always a way in. Especially for institutions or groups with the right amount of money wanting to make a major impact. In June 2010, a small Belarus security company discovered an unknown computer virus they called Stuxnet. The virus used USB flash drives and LAN networks to spread globally. By monitoring the activity of Stuxnet, the experts found out that 70% of the infections occurred in Iran. Was Stuxnet a sophisticated cyber weapon? Who or what was the intended target? Buried deep in the 10,000 plus lines of code, experts found the answer. Working like a fingerprint recognition process, the virus was looking for specifically configured Siemens modules. Exactly the same module scheme which is used to control uranium enrichment centrifuges. And the target? The secret Iranian uranium enrichment facilities in Natanz. The virus manipulated the centrifuges and was able to destroy 2,000 of them, incognito. Today, it's known that Stuxnet was a cyber weapon initiated by the USA and Israel under an operation called Olympic Games. This sophisticated attack succeeded in slowing down the Iranian nuclear program for decades. Now, out in the open, the code can be used as a blueprint for future attacks. These attacks could happen to almost any power plant, any factory, any ICS. It can be found close to your own home. Target-rich environments are not just in the Middle East. With massive infrastructure systems, the US, Europe, Japan, Australia, and South Asia are also prime targets. The question for us now is not if there is a new attack looming, but when and where. So since the time then Stuxnet was discovered, the world was never the same. And we've seen it, for example, in the James, ben, uh, James Bond movie. He's now working together with a hacker, and we don't see that many of the beach scenes, which is, of course, very pity. And even in the upcoming movie, we will see again the hacker scenario uh, in the James Bond. And actually, what they do in the also the James Bo uh, Bond movies is actually uh, cyber-physical security. So if you remember, there was a villain uh, who was sitting in the prison cell, and he used his computer system to infiltrate the um, <coughs> MI5 computer system, and he used the malware to actually open the door of his cell, and then he could escape. And this is actually cyber-physical hack. Why it is cyber-physical? Because you use cyber infrastructure, digital infrastructure, to perform some actions in the physical world. Um <coughs> so uh, this is exactly what I'm investigating, and. The typical understanding, like what we see in the movie, that you just like get access to some like power plant or just like whatever, and you just like with a couple of keystrokes, you just like make uh, things collapsing. And that's actually not true. This is also what is uh, uh, also highly publicized in the media. And um, like what I'm famous for and what I've presented at Black Hat, I was one of the first people in the, uh, who just like actually took the plant and just investigated. So. Actually, oh, so <coughs> what it takes to actually execute an attack of the level of Stuxnet. And the truth is, for example, this is like um <coughs> examples of forced uh, attack when you just like try to rise the pressure. So your goal is like, I want to rise the pressure some in some reactor making it to explode. And you fully, if you don't understand that this, uh, the state of the system, what exactly you're doing, the outcome of the attacks can be actually unpredictable from like something what means nothing 
to like economic inefficiency, or maybe if you like, you can achieve safety shutdown. So it means that you really have to understand and make some conscious actions in order to achieve effects, physical effects, like for example, the Stuxnet. The Stuxnet was overspinning the centrifuges, uh, rising the pressure on the rotating element, making them to break. And um, so uh, what I've done, um, I took a ke uh <coughs> chemical plant and I executed the complete attack from excess to uh, <coughs> economic damage. Basically, I've been spoiling the product in the facility. Uh, and I went through all the stages and I try, uh, figured out all the, the complexities the attacker is facing. And although it is believed like, oh, well, like once you get access, you can do whatever you want. No, it was actually one year of work. So it is extremely, extremely complex. Uh, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, why I like cyber-physical is it because you have a tangible effect. Um, and uh, one of the, like, what makes cyber-physical system different from IT is that in the, uh, like, uh, on average, like, any IT attack goes undetected for, like, more than a year. Why? Because nobody sees it. Like, when you change something in the, di in the digital world, if you're not watching there, like, like at that moment, you just don't know that something is happening. This is just not the case for some physical system. If you, if something is burning, uh, the operators, for example, of the facilities, they will notice and they will try to correct the situation. So once you try to exploit uh, cyber physical systems, you always immediately have to take uh, care of the concealment. So you have to make keep operator happy. And um, <coughs> for example, so. Um, <coughs> this is like typically how the process is monitored at the, any like manufacturing process. The process is somewhere like far away from the operator. An operator is actually sitting in the room and he does not see and hear anything. So if he does not know what is happening with the process, he is not reacting. He's <coughs> uh, and <coughs> it was suggested that so basically you have to if you want to keep the operator happy, you have to spoof the real state of the process. So typically what you do and you just hack into the communication infrastructure, you change the content of the communication packets, you change the data and <coughs> success. But so it was suggested if we will uh, actually protect the communicating link between the process and the operator, we should stop this type of attacks and we will be always able to see into the process. So um, what is a hacking? Hacking is like creative problem solving. And hacking is about like, you can do anything, and if it is extremely hard, it will just take slightly a little bit longer. So uh, you, you have to start thinking out of the box. And in this case, for example, uh, in my case, <coughs> this is one of the attacks which I've uh, done together with one of <coughs> another hacker. Um, so we abused the security boundaries of this infrastructure. So we basically we abuse the trust. So the process data, that is exactly the data we are interested in, they're generated in the physical world. And uh, the trust boundary is that whatever is in the sensor, so the data generated by the sensor, so whatever, whatever comes out of the sensor, it is trustworthy. And then you encrypt it and maybe put a signature on it, and the attacker should not be able to change the content of the packet. So, the, so uh, Understanding this, you can think, okay, well, then I can spoof process data already on the sensor, on the microcontroller, before the protocol stack. And then the wrong data will be encrypted and securely delivered to the operator. So, sounds very easy. Um, the truth is that it has, the sensor has extremely small microcontroller, and <coughs> you have a lot of tasks to perform. So, first of all, so what we've done is that <coughs> The typical sensor signal it is characterized by its uh, dynamic behavior and by the sens uh, sensor noise. So uh, what we've been doing, we've been trying to spoof the, uh, make the sensor noise and to replicate the dynamic behavior of the, <coughs> uh, of the sensor signals. It looks all very simple, but uh, it's a lot of mess, it's a lot of, um <coughs> uh, let's say, statistical um, Data processing and, the, and you have to come up with something like which is like maybe 400 kilobytes of code in total. So you have to think extremely smart, and this is what, um, <coughs> like, what is this hacking about? So and by doing that, you keep your operator happy. 
Um, so um, to reemphasize, so one of the most interesting things in the cyber physical is that the data is generated in the physical world. And although I gave you example of some chemical plant or like <coughs> you can think, uh, for example, of the uh, GPS system, of the tracking system. So, for example, uh, this is mm, like we now try to automate the like in vehicle systems, they try to talk to each other. Uh, the airliners, like the big ships, the container ships, they now do not, <coughs> they don't even have a captain on board. They're completely navigated by the satellites. So if you will mess up with the process, how the measurements to the destination is taken, you can actually uh, false, like forge the understanding, like what is happening or with the location of the objects. And Another interesting thing, so for example, in this case, if you will just like introduce some extra reflections, you can actually, yeah, you can make sync in the, uh, the GPS system that the distance is longer. And uh, another thing that like it's quite different from the, <coughs> from the digital system is that it is always important to track the physical objects and understand what is happening with them. So for example, if you will just like disrupt the so if you will just disrupt communication to a mail server, what is happening, you just not get any mail mails. But so that's not dangerous. So for example, if you will disrupt the GPS signal, for example, if it is automated traffic uh, <coughs> uh, control and you will disrupt the way how we track the cars, you actually can cause a crash. So what is important that in the cyber physical, like in the physical world, the freshness of the data matter. And by actually denying the communication or denying the services in the cyber physical world, you can actually achieve a major disaster, which is quite different from the IT world. So I really encourage you to look into cyber physical security. So if you all came here, you probably are interested in learning something you might be picking up new field so and now like with all of this internet of things when we connect all the devices over the internet we actually become in all the like connected world and the cyber physical is now everywhere the way how you control the bridges the sluices how you navigate the uh, big tankers uh, all the building automation it's all cyber physical so like traffic lights, we now we see the car hacking and so on. So if you will pick up a, a one of the areas which interests you, uh, you will not regret. It's a lot of fun because you will have physical impacts and um, it's quite visual and it's quite tangible. And <coughs> yes, so and with that, uh, this is the end of my uh, first part of the presentation.